In the battle against COVID-19, on the front lines are doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals who are doing tests and other kinds of administrative activities linked to fighting the battle, um, who are most at risk to being exposed to the virus. Uh, one of the things that helps them keep themselves safe as they help you make sure that you are safe um, are things called PPE, or personal protective equipment. Um, if you've been listening to the news, you will know that there's been a dire shortage of PPE for doctors, not just in India, but around the world. Uh, for instance, here in India, one company that's trying to bridge that gap uh, is Maker's Asylum. They're not traditionally manufacturers of any kind of healthcare equipment, but they've stepped up to the plate and they're producing face shields that doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals can wear over face masks. So it's a shield that comes over it and it stops droplets from coming towards them and hopefully stops them, keeps them safer than they would be um, and hopes helps prevent them from hoping them. Uh, joining me on NDTV Hop Live now is Vaibhav Chavra and you can see him. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Um, can you tell us, first of all, you clearly, this isn't something that you typically do. This is something that you decided to do once the lockdown came into effect. Yes, uh, so typically we are a makerspace. We are a lab uh, that functions uh, as a fab lab or a makerspace where people from all different backgrounds, engineers, artists, doctors, uh, use the space and uh, build stuff, build things that they want to. Um, so anything from a remote control car to making tables and chairs to making a motorbike or making drones. Uh, that's what we usually do. Uh, but about 16 days back, uh, thanks to having all this equipment in one space, we were able to uh, uh, put together some of these shields. How did that come about? Because I know that you started off initially using a 3D printer. Um, what was that process like? And you were also learning as you were making. Correct. So when we started off, we uh, thought of using 3D printers as some parts of the other, uh, uh, some parts of the United States and other parts of the world were using. And we were also doing some uh, DIY videos. So we thought we'll make some DIY videos. We'll make some content where uh, at least while we're in the lockdown situation, we can continue the makerspace being active because we do need to support the space. Uh, however, that's when we realized that the demand or the number, uh, the requirement of these uh, PPEs is way too high and the kind of uh, numbers that people were talking in terms of the requirement and their requests that we were getting from hospitals could not be uh, met by 3D printers alone. So we moved to a design which is uh, laser cut. So we made a very, very simple design uh, and it looks something like this. It's simply laser cut out of uh, foam board. We tried various materials and about 20 odd designs before we got to this one. And this one is uh, simply just uh, a piece of foam board with a, a bunch of locks. Uh, we call them M19s. And you're able to take OHP sheets. These are cellulose acetate sheets that you get in a common stationary shop. St shop. And then you pretty much just lock this into place. Uh, making this product or whatever, uh, the shield reusable because you can take the back part the foam board and put it inside uh, a liquid bath of soap for about 20 minutes and that will kill most of the viruses and bacteria. And that's been uh, told to us by various doctors and hospitals that we are supplying to, which is over 50 hospitals now in 22 cities. Incredible. So you started 19 days ago with the making... Uh, 16 days ago. Yeah, a, a, a thousand face shields. And yes. then you scaled it up to 10,000. And now yes, I was very scared. Black and incredibly, you've achieved that target. Yes. Talk, talk to us about that. Yeah. So when we started, uh, uh, we had a mere target of one thousand, as you said, uh, and uh, I thought that was a pretty ambitious target. But as we started getting better and better, uh, within the first day, we made a few uh, uh, less than a hundred, and then the next day, we figured out better ways of making them and getting faster. So we started making over 500 a day. Now, currently, every day we make about 3,000 of them inside Maker's Asylum. Uh, and uh, Maker's Asylum alone has delivered about 25,000 of these. But what we also started doing is that we open source this entire design. So design is completely open source. It's available on the website. It has, we open source the production as well, how to assemble them, how to follow all the safety norms, how to keep the lab safe. All of those are also on the website. 
and then other labs across india uh who we've been in touch with they started contacting us and uh, joining uh the force uh, now which we call the m19 collective and they also started making these at a really really fast pace there are kids making these in different parts of the world uh there are adults making these uh there are labs making these there are small towns we have people uh, towns like nanded uh patkal uh rajkot ganganagar also small small towns have also started joining the force because uh laser cutters has one thing that we didn't realize earlier but we realized much later is that laser cutting is also a self industry that exists and we sort of were able to piggy back on that industry and in the form of distributed manufacturing we were able to send out the files digitally to everyone give them all the information digitally so what's happening over here is that there are multiple labs and multiple of these uh, equipment laser cutters they can take the digital input of these files and then uh, they're able to create the same exact design and whatever city without much movement so that's the reason how we're able to scale up in 22 cities within 16 days and send out over 100,000 of these yesterday we cracked the 100,000 number uh, but and then all of us uh, sort of uh, as a collective decided that we're going to add another zero to it and give ourselves a larger target of 1 million uh, that's what we aim towards now we really really hope from the bottom of our hearts that we do not need to make 1 million and uh, we are uh, uh, we are able to uh, i mean move past this crisis but at the same time uh, we're all gearing up to be able to make more and more of these because uh, it's not only that the hospitals want it it's not only that the doctors want it all the frontline workers especially the police uh, uh, the bmc the volunteers currently who are supplying food to the poor feeling safe with it because not only does it act as a uh, pp uh, p equip ppe to equipment for hospitals where uh, it protects them from splashes and uh, mucus particles but it's also a very interesting behavioral science sort of a product because uh, humans in general end up touching their face 1500 to 2000 times in a day but the shield sort of reminds you every time you try and touch your face it stops you from doing that and uh, uh, that's one reason why a lot of people have been asking for these uh, especially like uh, guards and uh, workers who have to be working in today's crisis and their families are worried for them and everyone's worried for them so it offers as an extra layer of pro- protection uh, for them which uh, is nice and we wish to uh, uh give it to them if you can and we're giving to them pretty much at free or uh minimal cost the cost that we are incurring we're all volunteers over here working and uh, uh the amount that we're making them out we're giving them out and we also have a fundraiser going on uh the funds that we're collecting we're donating those to bmc workers and hospitals first yeah so i actually wanted to know you know how can hops viewers help you you know achieve that 1 million target or help you sort of fundraise what is it that you need what is it that we can do uh sure uh, so we do have a fundraiser going on on keto and the link for that is on the website so makersasalam.com/covid19 and on that you will also see the fundraiser of all the other labs in all their cities so you can decide if you want to support makers asalam in mumbai or you want to support jaipur or ganganagar or uh, patkal or whichever lab uh, so we put all their crowd funders over there every one of us is tracking where these shields are going at all time in an open spreadsheet uh so that we're able to see everyone's doing uh the right thing in terms of uh, uh for the fundraiser we're giving them out completely for free uh in the place where a private hospital or other hospitals have some funds to pay for it then we charge them 55 rupees which is at cost uh, that those uh, including all the taxes and everything just to be able to uh be able to uh, make sure things are running and we are able to pay for the materials uh so we're doing that and we're pushing them out Great. Thank you so much, Vaibhav. I think you you guys are doing some incredible work and I think your decision to keep it open source would have definitely helped you get will help you get to that 1 million target sooner rather than later. I'm sure of it. Um thanks very much. Keep up the great work and stay safe. Thank you so much for having us.